ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وبعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد always and forever we begin with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send our greetings and prayers of peace upon the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we testify with full firmness and conviction that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his worshiping slave and final messenger ahibbati fillah those who we have gathered together in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we interchange our love for no other reason than our love for Allah azza wa jalla and today this day of jumuah is a day of celebration eid fil ard wa fi sama it's a day of religious occasion in the heavens and upon the earth and in it we are commanded always to remind one another of our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be mindful of our affairs with him and others and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the quran as an invitation and as a warning by saying ya ayyuha alladhina amanu o you who have come to believe o you who have already accepted faith ittaqullah be mindful of allah be aware of allah be conscious of your dealings with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haqqa tuqati to the measure and in the capacity that he the most high is deserving of you and ensure that you live a life that is full of voluntary submission to him until the day you return to him and live in that way until we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun do not depart from this worldly life in any condition other than willful voluntary submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these few moments and i know it's exam time mashallah for our brothers here at the university especially our international students i ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you uh is and comfort in your exams and in your time that you spend here in Perth in Australia I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you attain the knowledge that you have come seeking and to make it as a path for you to jannah and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to return you to your family safely and securely Allahumma amin How does a Muslim change and my topic with you today my dear brothers and sisters is something each and every one of us beginning with me and you we are in need of a guide to change and the quran is full of stories of change of a person coming and awakening in their consciousness and in their spirituality and seeking qurba nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are full of euphemisms and and invitations in in his conduct and in his recommendations and in his corrections of those who lived around him of leading them back to as-sirat al-mustaqim No my dear brothers that one of the greatest aims of the shaytan is yudillakum dalalan ba'ida the shaytan wants you to leave the straight path which Allah refers to as sirat in arabi the arab we know as sirat mustaqim but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ada al balagha to make it known especially that it's not just a straight path it's an especially straight path it is that only one The shaytan vein is that when you stray from it that you are in dalal ba'id you've gone off the path so far you cannot recognize how to find it and this is one of the maka'id and the aims of the shaytan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds our father Adam and therefore the rest of his nest and humanity that we are always to be aware that this shaytan aduwan mubeen he is a clear avowed promised enemy to you but allah puts upon us and on our shoulders and within our heart and intention the capacity to come back to that straight path so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses different words that all mean the same thing allah says anibu 
Tubu. Aina tazhabun. Where are you going? Come back. As far as you go, you can return. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the one who steps one step, khutwa, one step, one foot towards Allah, Allah takes ten steps towards him. The one who walks to Allah figuratively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala runs to him. And Allah tells you in the Quran, الَّذِينَ اَحْتَدَوْ ذِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى Those who follow a moment of guidance, we increase them many fold more than they anticipated. Sitting with me here today, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us and make us from those who hear the truth and follow it. Are those who will be of one of two types. We're just one of two types. One of us sitting is going to hear everything I've said. And it will strike their heart and make a change. Another sitting right next to him clearly understands me. English, Arabic as well as the other. Has heard everything to the same clarity and with the same precision. And will hear the same words but will make no change. And both of them will walk out the door. One has changed for the better in his return to Allah. And one continues in his, head, in his life headlong. Why? Allah answers this to us in the Quran. The people of Musa, Bani Israel, the Israelites, they used to harm Musa with their question. And you can see it dramatized in the Quran often. You know, Allah would say to Musa, tell them to slaughter a Baqara. Surah Al-Baqara, izbahu Baqara. They say, what color is it? How tall is it? Who owns it? Where does it live? Instead of just choosing a cow and slaughtering it, شَدَّدُوا فَشَدَّدُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ They made it strict upon themselves, so Allah strengthened it upon them, made it more strict upon them. And Allah tells us, لَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ آذَوْ مُوسَى O Muhammad, don't act in the way of those who used to harm Musa. Musa complains to his people in Surah Al-Saf. Allah records the words of Musa. يَا قَوْمِ لِمَا تُؤْذُونَنِ Why do you harm me with so many questions? وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ And you have been shown proof أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ That truly, without a doubt, I am the messenger of Allah to you. The seas have been split. The rock has bled water. The food descends from heaven every morning and evening. الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى You know I am the messenger of Allah. Why do you harm me? وَقَدْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Allah enters him. Allah tells Musa, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُ When they chose the false path, I made their hearts not desire the truth. Now this is a dangerous moment in my life and your life. The moment you're upon truth and you know the truth. I'm not talking about, you know, fiqh differences. I'm not talking about ambiguity. I'm talking salah. You know Fajr. You know it. Darura. It's by your faith. You know Fajr. You know what time it is. You know how it is prayed. You know how many rak'ah. You know where the qibla is. Darura. Ilmun bi darura. You know it. The moment you choose, this is choice, to stray, Allah gradually yasrif qalba, causes your heart no, no longer to regret you miss it. Let's establish three principles before Jilta al Istiraha. The first sign that there is a problem is that something you know is right and you do opposite to it and not feel remorse. Danger. That you know something is right and you begin to lessen in it and not recover, not make an attempt to recover. Danger. Third, the company you keep does not bring you back to it. There's an ease of our conflict and our problem if we do something wrong and those who we trust pull us back in line. They say, where are you going? Come back here. Come back to the masjid. Come back to the Jumu'ah. Come back to the Qur'an. Come back to the halal. It's one thing that you have friends and mates and people who pull you to the truth. It's another where you've surrounded yourself by danger. People, ahaat bihim sayyatihim.
people whose sins now cover them, people who don't care about Fajr, who don't care about Qur'an, who don't care except about lust or desire or shahwa, who don't care about returning to Allah, those three are hallmarks that your heart is soon to be stamped from the light that is received by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll talk about the cure after Jilsat al-Israha. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم في التغفير الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من نبي بعد محمد بن عبد الله عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم All of us can identify an element of that in our life You don't have to be uh, a alim and makes no difference if you're a talib. Doesn't matter if you're a scholar, doesn't matter if you're a beginner in Islam. This problem is endemic within mankind, within humanity. If you were to think to yourself about that sin that Adam committed, Allah creates and puts him in Jannah, all of the trees of Jannah. Don't touch this one. Why this one, Ya Adam? Why does he fall to it? Because within you and I, there is this capacity of forgetting our nearness to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore sent messengers and rusul and the call to tawheed. The cure is only one. It is tawheed. You say, Brother Yahya, we're all muhideen, alhamdulillah. We all believe in Allah. Of course we all believe in Allah. But tawheed has certain conditions. And sometimes one or some of those conditions begin to dim in our life. They begin, the light of that tawheed begins to dim. It needs to be sparked. It needs to be reignited in our heart, in our deeds, in our action. There are seven conditions to a tawheed that the scholars of Islam have taught us. They look at the Quran and the hadith and they found that there are seven principles. The first is ilm, knowledge. Ya Akhi, if you're sitting here, UWA, one of the most prestigious universities in, in Western Australia, and you're sitting here and you're looking at math and science and English and chemistry and law and physics, and not once or twice you reflect upon the word of Allah. I don't mean reading the Quran and reading Surah al kahf but you don't know its meaning. I'm talking about ilm. What cures your heart? Ilm, its purpose is wisdom and understanding. Its purpose is application. And therefore, whenever Allah says, "Qalu sami'na wa ata'na," sami'na alimna. We hear means we understand. We've learned. Ata'na, we obey, means we work with it. We've lived it in our life. That's the habit of the Sahaba. That's knowledge. Al-ilm laysa ma hufiz. Ilm isn't what you memorize. It's ma nafa. The words of Imam Shafi'i. It's what benefits you in your life. Ilm, that leads you to the recognition of certainty, yaqeen, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your knowledge, when you look in the Qur'an and you, you just say you're studying physics, you're studying relativity, Einstein, the great wizard, the great magician of physics, and you say, oh, you know, everything is relative time and it's relative to distance. You look at it and then you see Allah gives you parables in the Qur'an. In the same ayah, Allah says, yawmun. A day with you is like a thousand with Allah, relativity. You look at that and you say, subhanAllah. Allah uses words in a way that makes your mind think you become certain that what is there, the universe declares to you, la ilaha illallah. Ilm that builds yaqeen, builds certainty, removes doubt, 